This is DJ Nocturna. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching on my YouTube channel, you know, please like and subscribe and be sure to hit that bell near the subscribe button so you can be alerted whenever I post a new video. And if you're listening on ModSnap Radio, Queen of Wands, or on my podcast, thank you for listening as well. My guest I'm speaking to is Irish composer, multi-instrumentalist musician, and one of the members of Dead Can Dance, Mr. Jules Maxwell. Hello, How are you? Good. I'm good. Uh, good morning to you. Good evening from London. I know. Good evening. I know it's, it's not too late. Not too late, right? No, it's not. No, it's not. We've, <laughs> just, we've just got our son to bed. So oh. all is quiet in the house. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just having my cup of coffee. I know you're yeah. probably having your glass I've of got, wine. Well, I'm having my cu cup of tea. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Your cup of tea, okay. Cup of English tea. Yeah, sometimes when I do interviews, they're like really off in the time zone, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, as we try to pick a right time, but I'm glad we were able to uh, make this connection. I appreciate yeah. you taking that opportunity and I, I appreciate that. Okay. Um, I know you collaborated in a new album, which, which we want to, I want to really talk about with a very talented Lisa Gerard called Burn, just yeah. released on May 7th. But before we go there, I just wanted to talk a little bit about yourself, about you okay. as, as an artist. I know you, um, you're Irish. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you're born and raised in, in, in which part? Um, born and raised in a little town near Belfast in the north of Ireland. Oh, um, yeah, and I, um, but I have lived in various places over my lifetime. We were in France, actually, when, mm -hmm. we, when this album was made, but I'm now currently back in London. Um, uh, so... But originally from from Ireland, yeah. I know you studied political science. Um, I was reading about that. Yeah. So different from music. Um, and I know you you have a very in, you have an interest in drama. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and then that, but I, I the political science is so different from music. But I, I can see. I mean, you got to have a little. Well, well actually, you know, life takes you on a bit of a roundabout mm -hmm. route to get where you are. Mm -hmm. Had I not done um, politics uh, uh, in, in university in Belfast, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Because you're right, yeah, I got involved uh, with the drama society at the university uh, with a group of people who have subsequently gone on to become um, top television producers and television writers and uh, produce, uh, and uh, actors. Um, and so my involvement with that drama group really led into my first opportunities to write music for dance so yeah I, I often think had I done music at university I may well have ended up not doing what I'm doing at the minute you know not maybe having the opportunities to compose maybe I just would have been the the French horn player in some uh, some lowly orchestra somewhere but because I did, you know, because I, because I, I genuinely sort of feel as if I'm more interested in drama than I am in music, that's, um, that's led me down some really interesting route, uh, routes in my, in my career. So I, I'm sort of very grateful to those years at university in Belfast, yeah. You know, you, you compose many beautiful solo pieces. And one of them I really love is, um, it's called Brown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one. Okay. Um, you know, who's a singer in that track, and what what is the language? That was a it's a very beautiful piece. Yeah, it's uh, it's Swedish actually. Um, the singer the singer is, is 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 a fantastic singer called Gabby Froden, who is a friend of mine. She's living in Glasgow. She's Swedish, and it was composed for a song cycle that I did, um, that I made for a a a. a, a a Swedish dance company called Skånes Dance Theatre in Malmo a few years ago. So there was, in the song cycle, there were about 10 different songs about different colours. Uh -huh. um, all of them were in different languages. And the, 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 uh, the one that you mentioned is, is about brown. The color brown, brown. Yeah, but something, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know you also you also compose full length pieces uh, for the Royal Arbor Opera House in London, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which was an adaptation of Sean Tan's book called The Lost Thing. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, so uh, in 2018, um, I uh, got commissioned by the Royal Opera House to create a, a full-length opera uh, of Shantan's wonderful children's um, picture book, The Last Thing. And it was a collaboration between between uh, the Royal Opera House and another dance company called Kanduku, yeah. who are based, based in London. So it was a wonderful opportunity for me to to work at the Opera House, but also to to work with opera singers m mostly, uh, which I'd never really done before. So it was a that was a real challenge. Um, but yeah, it worked, that that worked out rather well, and yeah. As I say, it's it's just one of the many very different things that I end up doing. Uh, I've ended up doing over the last twenty years or so. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I, I know you you've um, you you've been to you lived in France and uh, Ireland, and of course now you're in London. So just collaborating with all this and having the time. I mean, you have a family too, so mm. that's like you know yeah. you have to balance your um, time as well. You know well, what? You know, I mean, I, I do often think that, um, you know, if I was better at what I do, if I was a better musician, I probably wouldn't get half the opportunities that I do. It's sort of, um, I've had to sort of draw upon other qualities as, a, as, a, as an artist um, to make up for my um, limitations as a, as a piano player. And I, I think that that's actually quite attractive to um, collaborators, you know, I get asked to do things because I think people enjoy um, this slightly different angle that I bring to things, you know. And um, yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah. And you also sing on your on your music, right? Yeah, more and more so. I mean, for many years, I wrote uh, songs, and I was very happy for other people to sing them, and um, I was very happy to be the sideman playing the piano accompanying people sing songs. But when we were in France, we actually uh, ran a cafe. Uh, mm -hmm. And during those five or six years, we put on concerts, we put on many uh, events, uh, film screenings and talks and plays and whatever, but we put on a very regular um, concert, which I hosted. And I had many guests coming from from all over Europe to perform at the cafe. Um, but one of the things that I sort of learned how to do and have a bit more confidence in was presenting my own songs. Mm -hmm. So over those years, I began singing a lot more uh, and mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. you gain a confidence through just doing things. And um, so, uh, yeah, I really enjoy singing these days and, um, <laughs> Yeah, I do a little bit of singing with, with Dead Can Dance, and I've done a little bit of oh. sing, singing on this album with um, with Lisa as well. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, one of my favorite songs, I think, and I played it too on my show, is called Flowers Grow. I think you sang on that one. I think that's a, it's at a 2018 album that um, I think is uh, so, songs from the cultural backwater. Right. That, yeah. I, yeah. I love that song. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I played that. Uh, well, I I believe I played that like I don't know three weeks ago or so. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I'm actually yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that song today because I'm I'm working oh. with a with a Portuguese singer at the moment, a, a fado singer called Lina Rodriguez, and I was wondering whether that song "Flowers Grow" might have some potential if it was translated into Portuguese and sung oh. in, a, in a sort of a fado style. So. Um, oh I'll wow, you, that's I'll, gonna be that's wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you know how that goes. And if we do ever record it, I'll send it to you and you can. Yes, please. Oh my God, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, I, I mean, I love the title itself, Flowers Grow. How yeah. beautiful is that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you also work with many choreographers uh, and, you, and you've and you done soundtracks going back to 1996, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, yeah. Tim Lone's Oscar nominated short film. Yeah. Uh, Dance, Lexi Dance. Right. That's another one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and you you have a solo album that just came out. It's called Nocturne, similar mm -hmm. to my name. <laughs> yeah. It means night, right? It's a beautiful right. collection of um, eight in instrumentals, 
um, yep. the beautiful pieces. So what, what was the inspiration with that behind that one? I know it's a, it's a later album. It's a new one. Um, I, you know, I mean, I had been working with another dance company um, in England, down in Brighton, a company called Vincent Dance Theatre. Uh, and I've been working with them over the last five or six years on um, a number of different productions. Uh, and Charlotte Vincent, um, the director of the company, had invited me over the course of these several productions to to create uh, some very quiet piano music. So the, the Nocturnes album of the eight tracks, about four or five of them were mm -hmm. previously um, written for the dance company. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess, um, you know, in um, when the when the pandemic hit and the, a lot of my work dried up and I was meant to be going on the road with Dead Can Dance and that all fell through, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to get the, this collection of, yeah. Yeah. Of, of instrumental pieces together. And in fact, for a period last, last year, I was really working um, on just producing a lot of these nocturnes, a lot of these... Um, instrumental pieces and there's a whole second and third volume uh, which are which are going to get released uh, this this winter so yeah i'm hoping also to to uh, to take that out live just as a live performance just oh. me and my own so were they all were they all written while you're in england or yeah all yeah, so they're, they've all been written in England. Um, um, as I say, five of them were written over the course of five years. The, uh, the, the other three were written quite quickly. And then last summer I produced another 20, 20 nocturnes. So it, it, it felt like a very rich uh, seam for me to be mining mm -hmm. at that time when people we're running around not knowing what to do. It sort of felt like this was something I could quietly get on with. Uh, they they feel quite painterly mm -hmm. in um, in composition, uh, and I sort of felt as if I could get into my studio and just produce another um, another, another one of these um, quite fl uh, fluently during that whole period. So it was it was quite therapeutic for me to work on these things as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I know 2020 has been like crazy time for everybody, but you also produce a, a Christmas album too, right? In the late 2020. Um, uh, well, I have a I have a Christmas song. Yeah, uh, yeah. A song is called the. Uh, yeah, you know, called Christmas. Christmas has done nothing wrong. Yeah, and uh, I have a couple of songs which um, come around perennial uh, perennially. Uh, there's mm -hmm. this Christmas song, which which has been, you know, I wrote it many years ago, but Christmas comes along. So every year it gets sort of pushed out. And um, and I also have a, a, a midsummer song first called the 1st of July, which, uh -huh. uh, of uh -huh. course, the 1st first, first of July appears every every year as well. So it's it's quite nice to have these two songs that will always be there. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then you can play it every Christmas. I mean, yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Um, now I know how you uh, collaborated with Lisa Gerard. Um, you know, I, I, I've read a few things. I know you co-wrote several of the tracks from uh, the Mystery of the Bulgarian Voices mm -hmm. on two, two, 2015. But prior to that, you were touring with the band. Um, how did you? I guess how did you actually met? Like met met. Um, I. Before I toured with Dead Can Dance, I toured with uh, Brandon Perry, who is Lisa's oh. partner in the band. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I did a Euro European tour with him in, I think, 2009. Oh. And it was, it was as a result of that, that Brandon asked me if I would be interested in joining Dead Can Dance for their 2012 uh, world tour. Um, and I was absolutely thrilled at the, the possibility. So that's when I met Lisa for the first time. Um, yeah, so that's the, the background to that. Yeah, so what is it like 
um, what is it like to to actually work with one of the world's most um, gifted and most you know respected voice uh, vocalists, Lisa Gibbard? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you say that because I agree. I agree with you completely. I think she's one of the greatest um, singers of her generation, really. Um, mm -hmm. One of the most distinctive and influential yes. singers of her generation. Um, yeah, she's she's actually brilliant. She's she's really gentle and kind person, and uh, very generous. Um, and you know, we we hit it off almost instantly um, when I first met her. Um, my 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 wife and my son were with me at the time when we when we when Lisa and I met for the first time, and I think she. She loves children, so there was a connection there with my son. And mm. then the first thing, uh, there, there are always a number of uh, pieces in the Dead Can Dance um, yeah. show with, where, where she, she sings on her, her own. Um, and she invited me to, to work with her on, on a song for that tour, um, which began very, very simply. Um, but which grew over the course of 18 months into something much more elaborate. Mm -hmm. And so that, was, that, it, so, so that was a really gentle, gradual, getting to know you period. But yeah, yeah it's a, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that um, I know that um, you played one note and I, I found that really interesting. You play one note and you played another note. And then that's when the magic happened, I guess you can say. Well, uh, yeah, the very, I mean, she just wanted me to play a, a pedal note uh, and then she wanted me to play a, a second note and then just go back and forward between the two, the two notes. It was very, very simple to begin with. And, uh, and I did that and, she, and we did that for the first show, two or three shows. And then, and then I sneaked in a third note or a harmony <laughs> and, um, and she, she liked that. And very, very slowly the piece evolved into something that really, you know, there's a fantastic uh, recording of it from the Royal Albert Hall in London, which is, you know, it's just a, it's just a, an amazing, um, quite um, big piece of work. But it sort of grew very, very, very um, gradually and um, naturally. Over that period, I mean, I mean, she's an amazing. Mm -hmm. her, her 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 voice is an amazing instrument to oh, work with. Yeah, very. And it, you know, it is an instrument um, because she doesn't use words which are mm -hmm. um, translatable. Yeah. Um, you've got to engage with it as a as a musician in, in a different sort of way, in a sort of emotional yeah. way as well as a musical way. And she's not afraid to sort of, you know, singing is so important to her. It's not just, yeah. a, it's just, it's it's not just a, a pastime. It's a, it's an emotional commitment. So you know, yeah. if you're if you're accompanying somebody who, for whom music is so so important, you've got to really step up to the plate and and meet and meet them there. So it's a, it's a very inspirational. Um, oh yeah, she 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 definitely has her own um her own language, yeah. That, that people resonate with. I mean, they completely understand it and they, and they tune in. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. I I really like how you describe working with her. I, I don't I don't know how you put it in words, but you said something about a wild horse. That which I found really, and she loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said something like working with a wild horse in order to unleash the power you need to communicate with the, with the with that with the animal yeah, yeah um, you do need to i mean i i actually don't really know i haven't really done uh, i i'm not a horse man myself you know i've never ridden a horse so i mean i i guess i'm talking out of ignorance when i talk about uh, wild horses but i know that she's really into into horses um yeah i i just felt it was um i mean there is a wild side to her as well you know it's, she is very, if you were to meet her, I don't know if you've met her. No, uh, I, would, I would love to one day. Mm -hmm. You know, she's very gentle and quietly spoken. But, you know, she's also got a real sort of ballsy quality to her as well. 
uh, and she is wild at times. And um, yeah, I I imagine uh, you know it's like you've got to sort of it's not exactly tame her because absolutely that's what you don't want to do. But you've got yeah. to mm -hmm. go with you've got to you've got to lean into the the life force and the wildness and um, you know try and um, try and uh, you know use use that energy mm -hmm. um, yeah well now you guys have a, a collaboration with uh, the new album called burn yeah uh, that released and was released in May on the Latin curve um produced by james chapman um how did this come about this album i know it's um it's been something in the works for a while mm -hmm. and uh and I'm, I'm really really love the album i mean everything about it is just amazing you know it's it's, it's, it's very reminds me of dead can dance in many ways mm -hmm. and i i believe that this kind of music has to continue on you know her music your music mm -hmm. just the beauty of it i mean um we all look forward to it Hmm. Yeah, I was, you know, I was very, very pleased how it worked out. Um, it was an amazing process, actually. We, we, as you as you mentioned, we were working on on an album uh, for this Bulgarian choir, yeah. and um, the when when that was finished, we we produced six songs for that album. The four four were used but when I got back to to France I, I realized there was lots of lots of vocal takes that Lisa had done lots of improvisations that mm -hmm. I had recorded with her which sort of felt as if you know there's more more songs within here so I mentioned that to, to, to my publisher mm -hmm. um, and he said look why don't you uh, work with a, a producer called James Chapman to try and shape these mm -hmm. uh, recordings into one more track, um, see how it goes. So we, we 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 did that, and the final track on the album, "Do So Y'all," was the track that we first worked on, and it was it was good. And James James loved working on it. It was very free. We weren't working at that stage directly with Lisa. Her her work had been done, so it was it felt like a very clear process that I was I was involved in finishing with James mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we did one track and then we tried another and another and my publisher kept on saying is there, is there one more because maybe we, we could have an EP here and yeah. we got four songs and five and he said like any chance of two more <laughs> so we can get an album and we did we got um, we got two more done and it feels like actually quite a complete. Yeah, of... I mean, they're all perfect. Mm, yeah. yeah. I mean, they all came out just right. You know, like not one is like, okay. I mean, they're all like super okay. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And and you had seven commissioned films, right? That, that went, that that you co that coincided with this release as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, that was one of the, the joys of... Um, quite a long gestation period. The, the, the record was actually finished and ready to go um, two or three years ago. And we had a, a record deal in, uh, in California, actually, which fell through. And because of that, we had more time because if it had been released, um, then we wouldn't have had any um, films for it but uh we were able we had another 18 months to commission some films as well and i actually think the films are just as much a part of the mm -hmm. yeah. of, of the whole project as as the music so mm -hmm. yeah so there's um two wonderful polish directors worked on two songs and then the rest of the album uh, a very good friend of mine called David Daniels, who has worked mm -hmm. with uh, with the with Led Zeppelin and um, the Blue Nile. Mm -hmm. He um, he put together some wonderful abstract animations for five of the tracks as well. So it's a it's a very 
lovely visual package as well. And if we ever do perform it live, which I think Lisa is quite keen to do, we'll have a, 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 a we'll have an opportunity to show those films as well. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Um, do you do you ever plan to like put us uh, to to do a song, one of the songs in Burn in, in the Dead Can Dance uh, tour? No, I think I think it's quite separate. Um, I mean, a lot of Lisa, Lisa's solo projects, side projects, mm, yeah. have remained quite separate. Um, Brendan Perry is the, you know, he, he's the musical director of Dead Can Dance and the work mm. that they produce live is really, for the most part, um, work that he and Lisa have worked on together. So I, I always realized that was, that was the case. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we go back on Dead Can, can Dance go back on the road in in the yeah, US October, in, in October. Yeah. And yeah. at that stage I will just become the the uh, the, the keyboard player in the shadows mm -hmm. uh, behind both of them and I'm quite happy to do that. So that's that's fine. Yeah, that's pretty soon. Uh, so yeah. of, of, of the songs on the on the Burn album, which song you think resonates the most with you? I mean I mean you, I think all of them are really good, but I know there's, um, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard, yeah. To think, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, the song Now Ya Len, um, mm -hmm. I love uh, it. Bring, it paint, uh, there are very clear visual pictures come into my mind during that song. There always have been. Mm -hmm. um, there's another track called Orion. Yes. Which, uh -huh. um, Beautiful. Which I, I remember listening to James's um, version of it. He sent it to me um, and I was walking through London, listening to it for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And what, it, what I love about that track is, is the build in it. It, it. it begins very, very quietly and modestly, but then grows into something that's, that's really quite gigantic by the end. Um, so I guess those would be my two, two standout tracks on the album. Yeah, you know, the music of, of Dead Can Dance and this particular um, Burn album, you know, the album itself, is, you know, has a lot of, it takes you back, takes you back in time, you know, yeah. like most of Dead Can Dance music. Do you consider yourself spiritual? Um, yeah, I mean, I have a spiritual spiritual. Like soul, you believe in soulmates, past lives? Um, no, not 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 really, not mm. specifically. Um, but I do have a, a very clear sense of this of the spirit that I yes I connect with personally, and I know Lisa does as well. And we have a connection. Oh yeah, definitely uh, th through you know through that sort of um, side of our beings which I think communicates really clearly when we can channel it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I, I love the cover of the album as well. What is the picture on that album? You know, uh, I just want to make sure, you know, it's a picture. You can yeah, see. so it's a picture of a, an elephant. Elephant, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there significant to the picture, to the album? Um, I, you know, when I, the, I was working with the, the album uh, um, design artist and mm. he, we did a little, we've actually done a little conversation which we put online where, where you can see some of the other designs that he came up with. And he came mm. up with many different designs, none, none of which were quite right. But then he came up with, a, with, a, with a, a, an amazing image of, of a horse. Yeah. Uh, on its side, the, the head of a horse, the, the eye of a horse, basically. Mm -hmm. And I and that was the one that we were going to use in when, when the album was originally going to be released in California. Mm -hmm. um, but then for contractual reasons, we couldn't use the, the white horse. So we oh. ended up using um, using the uh, this. Uh, I wanted to recreate the spirit of that in some way. Mm -hmm. So I asked if he could find a, pic, uh, a photograph of an elephant, 
and, oh. uh, and he found that that particular picture. The, the original picture, the eye of the elephant is actually looking upwards. Mm -hmm. And then I said, look, is there any way you can turn the eye so that it's looking straight out? Yeah, the, uh, it's a very view. interesting cover. Yeah. So I think, I mean, it's like, yeah, I, I love the cover as well. I mean, this is, that's the great thing of, of making a record is that, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's all, it's all part of the uh, appreciation, the visual side of things, the, the films that we've made, as well as the music, contribute to the, the sense of what this, this piece of work is. Yeah. And, I, and I think that the, the cover cover work is 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 absolutely integral to the yeah. record yeah. yeah i think so too so um did you ever imagine that you would be working with with um lisa gerard i mean i i know you probably heard her music back in the 80s and i mean would you think wow i would uh, suddenly <laughs> <laughs> no it's funny it's funny actually i i didn't really listen to dead and dance in the 80s oh. um i was much more into um you know, more straight ahead pop music. Yeah. Um, I was in, so it's weird if I, you know, I often do think to myself, there's probably keyboard players in the audience at Dead Can Dance shows who think, you know, how did he, how did he get that gig? He must have <laughs> been a huge Dead Can Dance fan. You know, I would give my right arm to be playing with them. But, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't listen to the music. You know, I just fell into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I probably have the same feelings when I when I see Stevie Wonder play. I'm thinking like, if only I could play keyboards <laughs> with Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. And yet, his keyboard player probably has just fallen into that gig in the same way as I've fallen into this one. Yeah, it's funny how life unravels over time. I know that you know you know that can dance a bit too. We'll be touring in October. Do you have you have any uh, plans with uh, to make another album with Lisa, maybe down the road or another project? Um, no, we we don't really. Um, I mean, this this one has been such a joy. Yeah. Um, you know, if we if we do perform live, which we'd love to do, perhaps something will come from that. Because I think if we do perform live, the album. It won't be, it'll be a, 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 um, taking the album as a starting point and expanding on it. So inevitably, if we perform it live, it'll become something different musically. So that might lead into another record. But at the moment, no, there's no, there's no plans to, to do a second album. Well, you know, you fact, never, you know, yeah, you never know. You might play live in Hawaii. Yeah, ne I've never been. Never been to Hawaii, oh, yeah. so I would, yeah. love, I would love to, yeah. Is yeah. there a big um, following for Dead Can Dance in Hawaii? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm one of them, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah it would be great yeah. if we could. I don't know if, if the band's <laughs> ever played over there, but... Um, no, they never. I wish, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll mention it to them and maybe we can get over there at some stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I can see the venue too. Right. It, will, it will be a, the theater will, will be a perfect venue for this um, kind of music, you know, where okay. you can hear the acoustics and everything else. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a, do you have a favorite song of Dead Can Dance or a favorite album that you like to play? Um, Spirit Chaser, I love. Oh, I um, love that album. That's one yeah. of my favorite albums of, of all, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, uh, um, yeah, there's. I, I I also like a lot of the really early stuff. Mm -hmm. of the yeah. first album. Yep. Um, yeah, which which is a bit more thrashy. Um, yeah, we. It was one of the great things of playing uh, with Brandon, um, doing his solo tour. Is you know it's, it, his his solo shows shows tend to showcase. Uh, some of the early stuff, which is a bit more rock and roll. Yeah. And, uh, you know, currently in the Dead Can Dance shows, Brennan plays uh, bouzouki and um, percussion. But on his, um, in his solo shows, he plays electric guitar. And he's, you know, he really rocks, it, uh, rocks out on his solo shows. So I always enjoyed those uh, early albums as well because of that. 
Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I love this particular song called The Lotus Eaters. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, great. That's such a beautiful song, yeah. And of course, Kantara, Summoning of the Muse, uh, all, all favorites. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, but big shout out to Shauna before I uh, forget to mention, you know, Shameless Promotions PR, you know, always a uh, big help. Yeah, yeah. And everything absolutely. she's doing, she's doing amazingly well, you know, and um, just promoting, uh, you know, all those talented musicians like yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the to, to your tour. I, I hope I can go. I'm I'm trying to work it out with uh, things here. Um, you're going to be on the tour with them, right? With the band? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the tickets are sold out in most places. I, I think if not all sold out. Right. Um, yeah, I think there's probably still a few left. I mean, I don't know what the what the plans are in terms of um, whether there'll be reduced capacities yeah. in oh, some I of hope, the venues. Yeah. But yeah, we're playing. We're, we're playing some pretty good, pretty big shows. Um, yeah. You know, we're playing Radio City in in New York, New York, which is quite a big uh, venue. And then we've got a we're playing a, a, a big arena show in Mexico City, oh. which will be which will be nice as well. But you know, some beautiful venues as well. The Greek in um, in LA. Mm -hmm. and uh, the Masonic in, in San Francisco. And we're going to Detroit for the first time, I believe, certainly my first time. Mm -hmm. So that'd be nice, yeah. So your, your website, uh, if people wanna, wanna check you out, it'd be julesmaxwell.com. Yeah, julesmaxwell.com, yeah. And, um, is, uh, and then of course you the music, uh, you, you can find it. Um, burn um, where's the best place to find the music well just in the, on any any of the streaming platforms it's available there in, in, on, on all of them yeah well you know I, I really appreciate this interview I mean is there anything um, you have anything coming up with for for your independent projects um, I know you just released Nocturne um, yeah anything in the works like uh, so the both Nocturne's albums uh, are coming out as a double album in um, in the in the winter. So that'll be Nocturnes, which has already been released, yeah. plus the second volume of that. Uh, be, I'm working with the um, Lina Rodriguez in um, Lisbon, Portugal, which is just a brilliant project to be working on uh, on some Portuguese songs. I'm working on an album with. Um, Jason Cooper, who is the, the drummer from the band The Cure. Wow. Um, so we have an album which is just in gestation at the moment. And mm -hmm. um, I also have got a, a variety of different theatre works that I have on the go at any particular time. So it's always, yeah. it's always like half a dozen things at the same time with me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thank you for taking this time, you know, in your busy schedule to speak with me. You're welcome. It's very yeah. nice to talk to you. And, um, yeah. Yeah. and, and, and I hope to, uh, you know, bring you back on the show when, uh, when you have another, when you're, when you're releasing okay. your next album. But, you know, thank, pleasure, you yeah. Yeah. thank you. Okay. So JulesMaxwell.com okay. for those. Yes. Who wants and to love, for you. love to all, all your listeners in, uh, in Hawaii and, where, and everywhere else for where yeah. where you broadcast? Yeah, so this this would be this will air on you on YouTube, um, the video, and then uh, it will be on my podcast at modsnapradio.com. Okay. You, Jules Maxwell, thank you so much. You're welcome. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye bye.